talking about an individual letter, I also have gotten to understand more and more in my later years how important it is to write and send letters in the mail, because I know what it means for people to receive those. But when I accepted the call to be the pastor at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and Lutheran Campus Ministry at MTU in the early 2000s, I don't remember exactly what year it was, <laughs> there was there was one task from which I abdicated responsibility for as long as I could. And it was the sign out front on College Avenue. I've always been very leery of stereotypes of Christianity and Christians, um, quoting passages from the Bible and doing that sometimes to prove yourself true and to misunderstand, I think, the reason that scripture is there. But the notion of putting words on a sign out front really bothered me. And what, we were, what were we advertising and, and was I comfortable doing it were questions that I really struggled with. Besides that, what most people don't know is it's not easy to do in the winter. <laughs> It's cold and gloves don't work very well with these little thin plastic uh, letters. And sometimes the glass door would get frozen shut and had to be pried open. And it's, then it became easy to drop the letters in the snow underneath the sign and you had to dig for them and then your hands are just frozen. And if it's windy at Good Shepherd anyway, the glass door could come banging down on your head. And that wasn't comfortable. Well, a parishioner, a, a parishioner agreed to do it for a year, but then he told me finally it was time for me to take it over. But by this time, I had realized that most of the people at Good Shepherd were not your average Christians and that the task of selecting words to put on that sign was important. Actually, it was a golden opportunity because we were right there on College Avenue. I mean, free advertising space. It was a ready-made platform. You just had to figure out how to, how to do it and what to say. But I was often afraid as I got bolder and bolder with the words that I put on that sign. I was often afraid that it would, they, they would result in a brick being thrown through the window of the sign or of the church or some other type of vandalism. Yet it was a chance for me and for Good Shepherd to come out in the Houghton community. And it was a chance to get people to, who, who walked by and who drove by on College Avenue. It was a chance to get them thinking about something. So I took an old pair of cotton gloves and I cut the fingers off. And I kept a heavy duty pair of winter boots in the closet right across from my office. And I, I tied then a, a bottle opener, uh, a church key in other words, to the, the key for the sign. And I put them on a long string and I put it around my neck so I could open that sign with this bottle opener when it was frozen shut. And then I began to keep a file of words that were worth sharing. And I felt like I was ready. My loins were girded for battle. Okay. Well, occasionally we would get phone calls and letters and sometimes notes taped to the door or the door was often open and people would come in and slip in a note surreptitiously and, and, and then leave. Sometimes they were positive. I'd have people comment to me about appreciating something on the sign. The negative ones uh, were most often anonymous. Sometimes I was able to have discussions with those who actually did identify themselves. But no vandalism happened during my time there. It finally happened this last May um, of this year. And, so some, and some of you will recall that, that Pastor Sarah Semler-Smith put this on the sign for Mother's Day. And our first uh, screenshot is this. This is what Sarah put on the sign. <laughs> God loves you just the way she made you. Well, some people commented. It caused a lot of discussion to happen, and I was part of that discussion. Some people were not surprised that vandalism happened, and they would, and said that they would not have chosen those words. Not that they disagreed with God as she, but thought it was 
simply inviting trouble because people wouldn't understand or accept the message, which is all true. On the other hand, <laughs> there's always another hand, if it said, God loves you just the way he made you, it would be perfectly fine, right? Be okay. Come on, it's just one letter, right? What's the importance of one letter? Well, Sarah's response, public response to that, included a letter to the editor in the Daily Mining Gazette, and they gave her a lot of space on this one, that actually invited the perpetrator to own up and show up and have a conversation. And her letter began this way. Dear Vandals, thank you. Vandalism has a way of reminding you of the power of words indeed, of individual letters. Well, here's the sign, and here's what happened to the sign. Sarah's letter to the editor went on. Like Hester Prynne, our church sign on College Avenue was literally red-lettered, not with an A, but in very scarlet paint, someone wrote the word screw tape, on both sides, by the way, under our quote about God's love, eating, even adding a dash before it to indicate ownership, authorship. And then she said, how erudite of the vandals to use a literary reference when committing a crime. The screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis, written in 1942, is a satirical collection of letters written in the voice of Mr. Screwtape, a senior devil's assistant mentoring his nephew in the art of luring humans away from God and towards damnation. So screw tape can mean to mess things up, to be corrupt, and to be devilish. Was the vandal implying that to call God she is so offensive that the people of Good Shepherd, parenthetically, and their female pastor, are the devil's associates themselves? I want to be offended. I did get upset and even reached out to friends for care. It never feels good to be the target of ignorance and hate, individually or as a church community. She continued, ironically, <laughs> this was really quite funny, the assigned reading for that Sunday in Mark's Gospel from chapter 3 includes these words, and the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub, and by the rule of the demons he casts out demons. And then she wrote, Jesus, who welcomed the outcast, challenged oppressive powers, uplifted women. He too was called a screw tape, the devil's assistant in his day. And that made me feel in pretty good company. Well, the congregation then had a ceremony the following Sunday and scrubbed the word from the glass and rededicated both the sign and their mission in this community and the world. And Sarah then included these words Relationship is more rich when it happens in the daylight. And communities are built on civic dialogue, not acts of hate. Thank you for helping re-clarify our mission. Thank you for reminding us that when a person or group of people stand up against the status quo, even with a single letter, a history or history may want to put a scarlet letter on their chest use the word radical to disown their voice silence them or even try to take away their rights as a reconciling in christ congregation which in lutheran terms that means to openly and publicly welcome the lbgtq plus community as a reconciling in christ congregation we are proud to welcome all and we mean all. You, meaning <laughs> the, whoever wrote that word, you and the entire community are invited to join us any Sunday. She then noted the words on the sign would change to celebrate and lift up 
Pride Month, and she wrote, she put these words on the sign. Happy Pride. So our words here at Koof in the window and on the table back there, this place of worship, saying all are welcome, are a reminder that the people of Koof are building bridges on Bridge Street. It is indeed an ongoing challenge. Koof is now exposed on Bridge Street, like Good Shepherd is exposed on College Avenue. Doing this kind of work lays bare, however, the flip side of energy, holy energy, and that energy is not something that we should encounter alone. With that in mind, I recalled putting these words on our sign at Good Shepherd. <laughs> I don't remember the context of that, but I, that's, I, it, first thing I thought of was, holy insecurity. This is exactly what I always was afraid was going to happen. Well, um, these are some of the words that were posted over a 19-year period of going public. It is easy to put things on a sign. It's harder to love those with whom we disagree. Some of the words that I put on the sign were simply good philosophy, theology, and practice, in my opinion, anyway. Character is destiny. Next slide, please. To change society, one must change the individual. That's from Henry David Thoreau. From my Angelo, we can learn the language of love. And I maybe should emphasize that by saying we can learn the language of love. The best response to bad religion is better religion. <laughs> From St. Francis, preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. <laughs> My friend Derek Garnell gave me a, a poster with those words on it. Another one said, grace is free. Loving the neighbor has a high cost. That's from a man by the name of Lenny Duncan, who I believe is no longer a Lutheran pastor because he was too radical. You all have probably heard this one, Ubuntu. Person is a person through other people. I love Confucius sometimes. Those who offend the gods have no one to pray to. <laughs> I don't know if anyone really got this next one, but I thought it was kind of, kind of pithy. Um, this is from, uh, no, the, before that. Um, but Jesus said, did that one make it down there? Okay, okay. here's one that didn't make it. I, I, this was a last minute thing this morning with Juxta and I. But Jesus said, and then I put in parentheses, fill in the blanks. <laughs> but Jesus said, okay, you get it? All right. Then, from Pope Francis, I appeal not to create walls, but to build bridges. This one caused an interesting thing to happen. Um, it elicited a written response left inside the church building, questioning if we were really Lutheran, because Luther thought the Pope was the Antichrist. So how in the heck can you quote <laughs> Pope Francis on your sign? Well, okay. That was anonymous, by the way. Um, the next one from Paul Tillich. The first duty of love is to listen. Wendell Berry, practice resurrection. Insight from the Dalai Lama, respect for self, respect for others, responsibility for all your actions. Well, some were a bit more political. Um, this is where I, I had to kind of take a deep breath to, to do this um, because of the public nature. But understanding, as I do, that the holy or the spiritual should speak to how we and others with power run the world. So, for example, one world with a rainbow next to it. 
This one I think is very timely from Leonard Peltier who was just finally probably for the last time denied parole. There's always someone to hate. Must we hate each other for all time? It's difficult to dispel ignorance if you retain arrogance. And I'll just who that might refer to, I have you know, rather <laughs> fill in the blanks. We cannot stand by when people are discriminated against. Alice Walker once either said or wrote, peace will come wherever it is sincerely invited. Going along with that, there's nothing inevitable about either violence or peace. The world is full of many people, but only a handful of human beings. Maybe it's those who can pronounce, how'd you do, did you do, did you do, how'd you do. And I love this next one. You cannot hate someone if you know their story. So you can imagine the political context of some of the following words that I put on signs. Silence is consent. Speak out. We can't breathe if our black brothers and sisters can't breathe. I fully expected some vandalism on that one. And this next one. Is there a take a knee in there before that? Okay, I'll just read it. Take a knee and pledge to protect vulnerable people in Jesus' name. Okay, the next one I also expected some violence or some vandalism. God loves white nationalists, but not white nationalism. And then finally, in the midst of some of our refugee crises that are continuing and ongoing, Jesus was a refugee. So did you manage to get this picture of uh, Fannie Lou Hamer on here? If not, that's okay, I can read the words. I, this was way too much to put on a sign, but I sent it out in various ways, and I'll read it to you. This is Fannie Lou Hamer sitting on a, a porch in a chair. I don't want you telling me to go back to Africa unless you going back where you come from. I got a note one day telling me to go back to Africa, and ever since that time, it's been three times a week I say it when I am in a white audience. I say, we'll make a deal. After you send all the Koreans back to Korea, the Chinese back to China, the Jewish people back to Jerusalem, and you give the Indians their land back, and you get on the Mayflower from which you come, we all here on borrowed land. We have to figure out how we're going to make things right for all the people of this country. Well, some words that I tried out were just silly to see if anyone was actually reading these things. <laughs> yep, for example, no, that's not one of them. <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm glad you thought it funny because people at Good Shepherd tell me to clean up my act after that one. <laughs> but this one, went, this one went over well. Um, the next one, if you got that one, approach love and golf with reckless abandon. You know who said that? The Dalai Lama. Okay, all right. Well, some words will resonate right now here at Koof as we learn what it means to fully occupy a home on Bridge Street. Something new. And I'd like to... See, the, the problem with these signs is they're always in all caps, you know, so I would like to capitalize the word new here. Something new is happening here, and then we choose welcome. It's a choice. It's not a given. It's a choice that must be made. So our sign said this in 2006 when we declared our welcome specifically to the LGBTQ community. All are welcome here, really. The last word 
really <laughs> was intended as both a critique and an invitation to conversation with the other denominations. And I tell you, we got some flack from other clergy on that one. Because everybody says all are welcome. But I'm not sure that everybody means it. Because welcome comes with a price tag, and it's a conversion to a specific way of thinking that often includes those very people that you are claiming to welcome. So we are communities of hope that need to be in this together. And I'll remind you that when Temple Jacob was defaced with hateful words in 2018, many, many people in our community, both religious and non-religious, surrounded our Jewish community with love and support. Since accepting the call to Good Shepherd, Pastor Sarah experienced something that I recognize I'll never know firsthand, and it wasn't just the vandalism, it's the vulnerability of being female and also perhaps being a female clergy. And I, I shouldn't say perhaps, it is being a female and clergy. Nor will I admittedly ever fully know anything firsthand other than being a white hetero male, and a privileged one at that. But, here's my point, that recognition of who we are is part of what it means to be an ally. We are all part of the narrative, the story that we are hoping to become. That includes the need to support each other's work. But, and this is a difficult challenge, we are also called to recognize that people who do vandalism and violence are hurting as well. Reconciliation is difficult work. So I close this morning's talk with two signs that could be in front of all our houses of worships and, and in our homes and in our windows. People have taken to put things in windows rather than outside on signs because it's harder to vandalize. This one I, I've always attributed to French philosopher and theologian Jacques Ellul, think globally and act locally, you all know that one. And then finally, from Gandhi, be the change one wishes in the world. How'd you do, you do, you do, how'd you do? Thank you. <laughs>